Hello, everybody. So on this video, uh, we're going to discuss about something very simple, uh, the channels of an image. Okay. Previously, we have made a video talking about the bit planes of an image. That was a bit more complex as a problem. This is much more simple. Uh, so uh, let's begin. It's going to be a very short video. Now, remember, what is an image, right? An image is a matrix. Okay. The same uh, as the matrices that we use like in linear algebra, right? So it is a matrix of integer values. Uh, the values go from 0 up to 255. And each element in the matrix represents a pixel value. Okay, And the value of this pixel actually represents, uh, this integer value represents uh, the scale of gray Okay, for this pixel. So for example, the 0 represents black, 255 represents white, and all the intermediate values represent the states. Okay, so this here, for example, is a very, very small uh, two by two uh, matrix or a two by two image, right? So simple as that. Okay, so an M by N matrix uh, for N rows and M columns is practically an image uh, with values from zero to 255, right? So if I were to plot it, I would get something like that. So the computer understands how to plot uh, the uh, shades of this. Uh, value of this image, I'm sorry. And if I zoomed in, I would get uh, this matrix of integer values. Okay, so it is very simple to understand how to represent an image um, in a computer environment. Okay, and actually, uh, the techniques that we have from linear algebra, for example, like SVD uh, and other stuff, can be used uh, to apply image processing techniques. Okay, so it is you know, image processing is very closely related to linear algebra, and you know. Uh, matrix operations in general. So what happens when the image is colored? Okay, so in this situation where we have uh, this colored image right here, we actually have uh, an RGB representation, meaning red, green, and blue. Uh, so this image consists of three channels. And when I say channels, I mean matrices actually. Uh, so if I were to zoom in here, how do we generate this color? Okay, to generate it for each um, individual channel we have a separate matrix okay so this image right here i'm kind of abusing the notation for mathematicians is m by n by three meaning that it is actually a three-dimensional matrix and uh, we actually here have three different matrices one matrix that represents uh, the shades in the red intensity one matrix that represents the shades in the green intensity and one matrix that represents the shades in the blue intensity. So each individual pixel actually has three values. The value of the red intensity, the green intensity, and the blue intensity. Okay. So to analyze this image, you practically need to perform analysis on three individual matrices. right? And each of these matrices, you can actually plot it yourselves. In the description of the video, I'm going to put codes uh, to generate the graphs that you see right here. So what you see uh, above here is the three channels that I actually plotted in their specific color range, the red, green, and blue channels, okay? Uh, this looks very nice, okay? You can understand the intensities for each channel, but it shouldn't confuse you because each individual channel is actually a gray image, right? So it would be a bit more appropriate to plot the graph below. So it's red, green, and blue channel. Actually, since it is an individual matrix of integers, is practically a grayscale image itself. Okay. So this is a more accurate representation of the channel, Okay, the grayscale values. But MATLAB gives us the opportunity with just a few lines of code uh, to plot them in their specific color range. Right. So in the description of the video, I'm going to put codes to plot each individual uh, graphs. Uh, as you like it. But remember that uh, the more accurate depiction is actually uh, the one that you see below, that they are in gray. Okay. So simple as that. A color image has actually three individual matrices, and each matrix represents uh, the color uh, the color level. Okay. All more correctly, the color channel. channel. So uh, one thing that you need to remember as well, it is uh, much more common nowadays for encryption. Uh, before we perform the shuffling and the substitution steps, we first take all the three channels and combine them into a single matrix, as you see right here. So you pretty much append them on the right, 
So this big matrix right here has m rows, but three times n columns, right? And then we perform suffering and substitution. And the reason we do that is because this way, uh, we kind of combine all the information together from all the three channels, and we scramble all the three channels together and substitute the three channels together. Okay, so this is a bit more secure compared to specific statistical tests. Okay, it is generally a bit more efficient as well. So this is much more common uh, in current literature. You may also see techniques where they uh, perform encryption on individual channels, but I think nowadays it is much more common to first combine them all together, right? Uh, it increases security. So that's the important and very basic things about uh, the channels of the image. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.